I've heard it said there are some things you just can't do in people code, but is it true? Well, how about this? Have you ever tried to read a binary Excel spreadsheet from people code? Just a moment. I want to look through people books for a function that might do that. I didn't find anything. Or what about this? Have you tried to create a zip file in people code? Or what about generating a cryptographic hash? Oh, actually, wait, there is a people code solution for that. It's called the PeopleSoft Pluggable Encryption Technology. Anyway, have you experienced what seems like people code limitations? Now, I've read dozens of forums and blog posts asking how you accomplish, say, X, Y, or Z. And what I found is a lot of customers reach for the command line. Here's a great example. Uh, let's say you need to FTP a file. Now, the first thing you might do is generate a command line or PowerShell script, and then we could compress, check some sign, and then FTP that content with just a single script, and then launch it through the people code exec command. So what's wrong with the command line? Actually, nothing. See, there's a gap, but the gap is with the people code exec function. People code allows us to execute a command, but not read from or write to or evaluate the response from that command. So is there another way, perhaps even a better way? What if we could accomplish each of those steps within people code? So let's consider that same process flow. Step one, gather data. Step two, compress the data. Step three, checksum, or shall we say digitally sign. And finally, step four, securely transfer the file to another system. How would you do this with people code? Now, people code is a fantastic text-based processing language, but binary data processing is beyond its reach. So what's the solution? How about extending people code? Now, people code has full support for Java through the Java native interface. So you might say Java could be an extension of people code. Using the delivered and configured Java runtime environment, we can create Java objects, invoke static methods, or even write our own Java, all from people code. So here, let's warm up with a couple of simple examples. Let's do this. Let's create a Java string. So local Java object equals create Java object. That's the people code function for creating an instance of some class that exists. Uh, the easiest to use is from the JRE, the Java runtime environment documented, or you might say the Java API that's already there. So what we want is the java.lang.string. Now, a string has a constructor, and the constructor parameters going to that constructor is uh, what data do you want in that string? So how about let's keep it simple. Hello world. OK, that's fantastic. And now we've got a, we should have at the end of this, a Java object containing the text phrase, hello world. Let's write it out to the console. And then the Java object. Now, I'm about to press the Save button which will force a validation, compile, et cetera. And I want you to see what happens. So control S, save, uh-oh. It says invalid function parameter type. Well, what's it, does it mean? What it's saying is I cannot pass a Java object in message box because message box expects a string in this location. Isn't this a string? Well, yes, but it's a Java string. Now, interesting. All Java objects inherit from or subclass the basic object, which has its own to string, which can convert the contents into a string. A lot of Java objects override to string to provide an appropriate implementation for the content type stored within the object. In this case, it would return a string that then people will recognize as being an actual string. That's fantastic. Let's go ahead and run this. And then we'll take a look at the log output. And it printed exactly what we expected. That's fantastic. OK, let's go back to the code. So you might say this was an incredibly simple example. In fact, you might even call it ridiculous, since we can already create strings in people code. So I mean, why use Java to do something people code can already do? And now that's a really good point. So in JSM Pros, we believe we learn best when we can relate to the target. And in this case, the target is Java. So we start with what we know. In this case, that would be creating strings. And we work towards what we don't know, which would be other Java and Java objects. Anyways, let's try something you cannot do with people code. Here's a scenario. Have you ever wanted to create a temporary file complete with system generated file name? Uh, so here's where we start. First, we need a pointer to the file class, the java, java.io.file. So local Java object in 
equals get Java class. Now there are really two people code functions associated with Java. There's the create Java object, which creates an instant of, or get Java class, which gives us a pointer to the Java class, which is important if we want to, to invoke a static method as we do here. The static method we want is the create temp file method. So we want an instance of, or we want to get to Java dot io dot file and then let's see we're going to say local string how about this local java object nj file equals nj file class dot create temp file oh spelling case is actually very important here because people stop going to take and pass it back to java which happens to be a case sensitive language and we need a prefix, how about JSM? And then suffix, you know, what kind of extension would you like for this file? And then let's see, let's get a variable for the name coming back from J file. So local string and file, file name equals that'll give us the path and let's print it. Okay, we'll press the save button and it compiles, but does it work? See, when you and I are compiling people code and everything is people code, then people code can look back at its own objects and say, are you using a method of a particular object? Did you spell it correctly, etc." Now, when we're using Java objects, PeopleSoft doesn't look back into the JRE and say, oh, you know, create temp file. Is that truly a method of the file class? In fact, it doesn't even know this is a file class until runtime. So we may actually experience some runtime errors associated with this code because PeopleSoft doesn't have design time checking against what's on the other side of the dot, which is very different, right, from standard people code. So let's go ahead and run this. What we're expecting to see is the file path to the temporary folder. I have no idea what that is, as well as a file name with the JSM prefix and the .tmp suffix. So let's run it. And then, of course, we want to see the output in a text file, the text file coming from the App Engine log. That is fantastic. So you can see the entire path there. Now here's the other interesting thing. The function, or excuse me, the method we invoked is called create temp file. Did you emphasis on the create? You know what that means? That means the JRE created this temp file, which means that it already exists now in my temporary folder. So I don't have to worry about some other process using the exact same name. Well, Jim, where would you use this? So it's very common for us to ask our users to upload files. We put those files into file attachments and occasionally we process those files. When you download those files temporarily for processing, where do you put them? Well, a great place to put them might be in the process output directory so that it's all stored with the process scheduler if you're running them from a batch process. What about online? How do you know whether that goes in like ctemp or if you're on Unix or Linux style operating system? Or does it matter? Or can we just ask the environment to provide it for us? Anyways, there are so many things we can do with Java through people code. Be sure to check out our blog for dozens of examples. Likewise, subscribe for updates as we are sure to share more examples. Now at JSM Pros, we teach people code tips like this every week. Check out our website to see what we're offering next. Or here's an idea. Do you have a group you would like to train? Give us a call and let's get something on the schedule. Now, before we go, I have a question for you. Do you have an idea you would like us to discuss in a future soundbite? If so, share it with us at soundbites.jsmpros.com. Now, if you enjoyed this episode, be sure to like, share, comment, and subscribe for more content. And we look forward to seeing you in the next episode.